Okay, Art Gang, welcome back. It's James Com, your half-assed reporter. And we're gonna run in here to the front room on this beautiful autumn afternoon. And we're gonna look at an exhibition of photographs by this cat. Steve Mallon, is that the way you pronounce it? Ma right? Mallon, okay. Let me sweep around the uh, gallery here. Tell me what the name of the show is, Stephen. The name of the show is Prelude. Prelude. This is the largest floating structure built by man. It wow. 1,600 feet in length. Almost the size of Manhattan. <laughs> I'm just gonna sort of run through here and get a quick pen, then we're gonna come back and maybe we can talk about some of the pieces up close. Get some of the uh, details, some of the technical stuff. Well, first of all, um, I was gonna say that uh, you've kind of gotten yourself a reputation now for doing kind of marine-based work. You did a piece that was uh, documented the Movement of the, what is it, part of the uh, Tappan Zee Bridge? Was that what it was? It was the uh, Willis Avenue Bridge. Willis Avenue Bridge. And it was thousands and thousands of still photographs you kind of yeah, pasted it was, together, made it look like it was a video kind of? It was a time-lapse film that we, uh, we created out of over 30,000 still images. 30,000. <laughs> and uh, then I saw you did another piece, this is probably six or seven years ago, about uh, artificial reefs that were made out of... Uh, Recycled subway cars? Yeah. Was that you too? Okay. That was also me. That was, yeah, the, that was my photo essay on the uh, MTA's artificial reef project where they, they sank over 2,500 subway cars in the span of 10 years. So you're getting kind of a reputation for uh, your documentation of these, I don't know what you call it, maritime, almost environmental, sort of superstructural aspects? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's look at some of these up close. Uh, I was talking to Daniel, I guess, a weekend or two ago, and he was saying that this was all, this was made at a shipyard in South Korea? Yes. This was uh, shot uh, in the summer of 2014 uh, in South Korea. It was a commission by the uh, New York Times Magazine. Ah. Oh. So they basically came to you because they knew you'd had this maritime experience and... Uh, had seen some of your other work before? Exactly, and so we had a meeting a number of years ago and they were interested in the time-lapse work and uh, so I did a film on the behind the scenes of the Metropolitan Opera for the New York Times Magazine. And when did that come out? Uh, that was three years ago now. The 12, yeah. 2012? And then okay. two years ago I did another film about the uh, uh, Rough Trade, which was the first new like record store to open in New York, or largest record store to open in Brooklyn, like 15,000 square feet in Williamsburg. And they actually have records? And they actually have Vinyl? records. Vinyl? Vinyl and everything, exactly. I remember those <laughs> days, back in the Paleolithic era. Right? <laughs> so then they called you up and you, you said it took months to make all the phone contacts and everything? Yeah, well, this actually uh, was my uh, concept. Um, I brought this to the magazine because I, I wanted to do something in print for them. And uh, they liked the idea, and so we got Shell on the phone and started discussing it, and they... Uh, you know, it took them a little bit of convincing that it was a good idea to, uh, that they couldn't just hand over the photographs that they already had. Um, but the New York Times was uh, totally in my corner and uh, we got them to sign off on it and got me over there when they were moving the first uh, module, which is this giant piece that's right there. That was right. the first module getting installed on the top of the prelude. So is the prelude out actually on, in the ocean now and doing Not its yet. business? It still hasn't gotten... <laughs> Not yet. It's still gotten in into water. free water. Nope. Uh, I was able to uh, spend a week in the uh, shipyard uh, to create this body of work about the, uh, the construction of this. Now this is all this is all just straight photography, right? These are not patched together. This is all just one shot. Or do you put things together? Do you alter the the photographs once you these take are, the exposure? None of these are stitched together. Yeah, these are all uh, individual vials. Um, if you go to the New York Times Magazine site, uh, and my site shortly as well, you can see a stitched together landscape but of the prelude, but these images are all individual files. Now I noticed in a lot of these that uh, you've got like a very high 
uh, viewpoint. Now, were you, you were lifted up in cranes, or how did you get the bird's was, eye view? Uh, I ended up uh, being on top of a number of these uh, gantry cranes. We were able to be on top of... Uh, up on the big cranes, yeah. <laughs> like those guys. And you have no fear of heights, I take it. I have no fear of heights. Not yet. Well, tell us about uh, what type of camera you use, uh, what type of uh, programming you're doing with this. These are all this shot is the prelude. on the uh, Ken, uh, Ken 5D Mark III. Uh, shot with so this, this piece right here is this piece over here? Is yes. That... Wow, and that's... Uh... <laughs> It's a pretty hefty little uh, piece of hardware itself right there. Okay, so they're shot on what kind of a camera? Uh, it's the Canon uh, 5D Mark III. Okay. And then uh, they are typically processed through uh, Lightroom and uh, Adobe's uh, RAW engine. And then uh, through there we're uh, doing any of the color correction and uh, exposure adjustments. And then these are uh, digital sequence. All the Printed in addition to five, the three sizes. Okay, and tell me, so these are the large size, and that's what, uh, 36 by 48? Is that what that is? 40 by 60. 40 by 60, yeah. okay. And then I guess this one here is? This, that size is 30 by 45. 30 by 45, and let me guess. 20 by 30? Correct! <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen a few uh, rectangles in my time. <laughs> well, this one is nice because you really get a chance to kind of see a little bit of the, uh, the landscape around the shipyard. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive uh, location. There's about 35,000 full-time employees there. And they're, they're putting out uh, a ship, I believe, once a month. Wow. Now, how long have they been working on uh, the Prelude? It's been in development for over 10 years. Uh, I think the commission uh, went down in 2007, um, got signed off in 2009. Uh, so there was, there was a number of years of just, you know, engineering and design and approval to launch the ship. It's going to be uh, stationed off of the coast of Australia for... Now is this, is this privately owned or is this government funded or...? It's a mixture. It's funded uh -oh. through the government of Australia, through Shell and also through the uh, uh, power company in Hong Kong. So they'll be using this for natural gas and they'll be using the natural gas to power the electrical generators. Is that what they're thinking about? I will, yeah. The, the gas will be come out, but well, yeah, will either go into power plants or it can be typed, uh, can be tapped right into the uh, gas lines in wow. Hong Kong or any other major city. Okay, this the, is a little bit different than some of the other pieces. This is one of the interior shots. These are the uh, cooling tanks. Where okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, this looks like a little bathroom, but don't tell me this thing is like 60 feet tall or something. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> So this would be a, just a big storage tank then. Wow. Yeah, the gas comes in and then it's refined directly on the prelude and then will be chilled and stored in liquid form instead of gas in, uh, in these giant cooling tanks. And this is also an interior scene. Wow. Do we have any idea what something like this would cost to build? It's gotta be. It's in the billions. Many billions. Yeah. It's the, the, place, the, the displacement of the Prelude is equivalent to six aircraft carriers. Oh my god. Well, one of the things I like about this <laughs> piece is it's definitely a big slab of red. <laughs> you know, I mean, as a painter, you got to appreciate that. You know, the other thing I was going to say is there is a certain kind of almost an abstract quality to some of the photographs. This one, it's more obvious because you're dealing with those kinds of uh, large forms of color. But uh, I think you probably do make a kind of a conscious effort of how you select your scenes and uh, crop the photos and sort of pick out the field because a lot of these are kind of 
not exactly symmetrical, but there is a kind of a basic uh, compositional symmetry that you're going for, am I right? Yes. I usually, uh, my normal goal is to have the photo essay, to have a couple of images that do kind of encapsulate the entire story, and then some images are more abstract than others. And here are more, <laughs> more of the big slabs of red again. Uh, this is a little bit off the direct subject, but uh, tell me a little bit about your ideas about photography. Who do you look at? Who, uh, who has influenced you over uh, your development as a photographer? I like this. You can tell how, how much gas they've got in there. Yeah, the, uh, that middle red line is where the uh, ship's water line is going to be when it's full. Gosh. Um, so I was influenced by like a, a number of the you know, classical photographers, uh, Steichen and Stieglitz, and uh, as far as the contemporary photographers, I've always you know, been a great admirer of uh, Ed Berdinsky. Ah. Uh, That's nice with the workers. And again, they got, you know, this is a nice... Uh, Nice coloristic study with a kind of a peppermint green scaffolding and the yellow stairway. Okay. Well, anything else you'd like to say? Come Thank by so and much. see the show. Come by and see the show. It's, it's up for another week. Closes on October 11th. Oh, geez. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure, and thanks for having us. And this was done in the summer of 14, right? And you're over there for a week and... Yes. Okay. All right, thanks, Steve. And as always, everyone say it in unison. Thank you, Kate. Oh, one other thing. Gotta congratulate the new daddy. I just saw the baby. Tell us oh, the baby's you. name. What's the baby's name? Her name is Ada. Ada. Born September 7th? September 7th. Six pounds. Six pounds, five ounces. Okay. Five, six and a half pounds. Okay. And oh, I want to thank my Kate too. <laughs> Both Kates. All right. Thank you, Kates. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you.